are we saying that we now need to introduce training courses that are more patient centric? And why I say that is, yeah. I saw the other day there's yeah. um, a documentary yeah. around menopause yes. that has been accredited, yeah. such that doctors or any healthcare practitioner who yeah. watches this documentary yeah. uh, can get their professional development points from it, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's a documentary from a patient perspective right uh -huh. so how do we retrain practitioners because they need to understand from what i'm hearing from a patient community how how do we get them to understand that in the u.s for you to do medicine mm. this what you call pre-medicine mm. to test and see mm. is this the life you would want to follow yeah. In our Kenyan setting or in our African setting, mm. it's not the same. Mm. So people are pushed into their career. Mm. Actually, I have one friend who is a uh, general surgeon mm. in Busia, mm. and he regrets why he went to do medicine. Mm. Actually, he says if you'd come back in another life, you'd not actually follow that path. So in essence, it's like he was pushed mm. uh, into it. An estimated 1.1 million Kenyans fall into poverty each year. And that's because of healthcare costs. Would Sha Shif UHC change that or is there more? Or perhaps what's the difference between a pharmacy with a blue cross and a green cross? What about cancer and the rising incidence amongst the youth? Is it just lifestyle changes or is there more? Women's health, men's health, your children's health, the economy, this and more awaits you on season two of Kenya's favorite health podcast. My name is Dr. Diana Wangarigitao, and welcome to season two of the One Health Lens podcast. Hello, welcome to the One Health Lens Podcast, where we have conversations around health and related topics, making them simple and easy for you to understand. I'm your host, Dr. Diana Wangara Gitao. Today, as always, we're having a very important conversation around have Kenyans lost trust and faith in the healthcare system. So maybe let's talk about the solutions, right? Mm -hmm. Um, how do we claim what was ours? Um, because it sounds like the mistrust comes from there's a disconnect between what was truly African practice, right? This community approach to every other element of healthcare, education, and you know. So, how do we reclaim what's ours? Do you, what, what do you think we need to do? I think it's so important to become curious mm. about the, what's around you. Mm how things work mm. like you know we have so many resources if you if you look at let's say the abadeas alone mm. yes that is a god-given natural resource yes. of medicine natural mm. medicine that we are ignoring mm. so but we now have the capacity to google mm. to research we have people who live out of the country we have we can access labs out mm. of the country yes. we have the capacity now if we want to to send mm our own uh, knowledge out of the country to be verified mm -hmm. at the same time to document what mm -hmm. our grandmothers and grandfathers are saying mm -hmm. to continue speaking our languages to yes. document our languages to speak to each other mm -hmm. to become friendly to really now retreat into the cocoon mm -hmm. of being an african mm -hmm. and saying i have these 20 different things that grow around me what mm -hmm. are they for mm -hmm. how did my grandmother use them mm -hmm. what can i do with them who can i speak to mm -hmm. where can i write it down mm -hmm. who can i teach each one teach one mm -hmm. so i think for us to harness our resources and actually to capitalize and commercialize and at the same time ret retain and retrain and mm -hmm. become who we really need to be yeah. because without our own medicine without our own food without mm. our own ideas mm. our own ideologies mm. our own language it's like we're slaves to everybody else mm. other people tell us how to heal ourselves mm. how to have our babies mm. how to educate what language to learn how to do business yeah. it's everywhere i mean this this kind of like this shroud mm. of foreign activity around us the yeah. chinese are doing it to mm. us the indians are doing it mm. Everyone but mm. Africans have their own mm. pharmaceutical and pharmacological knowledge mm. about their own healing mm. tradition. Mm. So I keep asking myself, even if you say that you want pharmaceuticals, big pharma out there to come mm. and validate our traditions or our health or our knowledge mm. or what we say, 
if we have morobaine mm. we first need mm. somebody who lives in america mm. who has been to some institution mm. to come and say mm. oh this morobaine <laughs> is very good mm. yes this is medicine yes, yes. but for us it's not medicine mm. until somebody else says mm. it is even though it's been treating us mm. for thousands and thousands of years mm, so when will we develop our own knowledge systems mm. and bring them at par mm. to that global level only so, when mm. when we take this mm. as very important mm. okay i mean uh cairo you are particularly vocal um well vocal around how healthcare practitioners yeah um interact with patients yeah. that at some point you've said we have become too technical yes. and we've forgotten why we're doing what we're doing yeah. right yeah. this is for human beings right yeah. Yeah. and we have totally disassociated yeah. the human element yeah. and it's almost as if we are all just speaking to each other right yeah. why do you say that why why do you seem to say that healthcare system mm. has failed uh, patients It's oh healthcare practitioners yeah, rather mm. they they have because mm. uh when you look at how it has been structured mm. um you see the healthcare providers mm. they look like a god like mm. which is very wrong mm. because you find even the time there was the doctor strike mm. the nurses strike uh even the practitioner themselves they mm. also already feel because power has been given to them by the big pharma mm. the power has not been given to them by the people mm. we, we need to different you see the medicine man mm. in the african setting mm. power was given to him by the people mm. they said we look at you we see you are doing good to our community mm. so they empower you the community mm. but the current system mm. the power that you have for you to be called a doctor mm. for you to be called a nurse mm. for you to be called a pharmacist mm. it is power given to you by those who set up the institution not the community so mm -hmm. so when someone is given power they'll come and lord over mm. you see i'm coming to i the doctor said so mm. so you have to follow me because mm. i am the doctor i said so mm. so but now the question comes in mm. where does the patient have room to speak up mm. and speak their mind where you know there are places <laughs> one of the patients said is that um, you know oh, these doctors always tell us what to do they mm. see us that like we are not intellectuals or we don't have knowledge of uh, or we do not know our bodies mm. i remember even in parliament mm. one of the member of parliament mm. uh, i think it was uh, uh, what is mili mm. mili uh, she said i am no gynecologist mm. but i am a woman mm. for the mere fact i am a woman i understand my body by body better because mm. i remember one of the other mp was trying to say mm. let dr so so come because he's a gynecologist mm. he's better place to speak mm. and she stood and said mm. i being a woman i understand my body better than dr whoever mm. i don't remember the mp mm. uh, but he was male mm. he doesn't understand my body so it is me to guide him mm. and tell him what i mm. as a woman i go, go through an experience mm. so with that you see already that is already a dis Yeah. so in actual sense uh for me how i view it mm. is that they should understand their part and parcel of the community it's mm. only that you have chosen a different dimension of how to give back to society just like the way a teacher chooses to educate mm. you have chosen to treat people mm. another person has treated chosen to be uh, engineering another one has chosen to protect the people through justice system another one has decided I'll, I'll be an entertainer to make people laugh and be happy so each person it's the empower given unto you and there's a reason why like the village entertainer was, it's the power given to you by because the moment people don't laugh at your jokes mm. they, they have uh, moved uh, moved the power away mm. So because of that kind of loading over mm. uh because I'm the doctor I said so mm. follow the rules I remember there is a patient mm. uh we were discussing this in a classroom and mm. said mm. you go to Samburu you mm. are a doctor there or you're a nurse there mm. and you tell the the pastoralists mm. take these tablets with a lot of water mm. These people mm. <laughs> when when is the last time they found water mm. so you can imagine the disconnect mm. in actual sense you should sit there and ask yourself in this this apostrophist mm. water is very scarce mm. what could be the alternative mm. is there a plant that maybe within the community mm. when it's cut has some liquid in it and you could actually mm. you, you get the, you're connecting with the community. but you, you you've already said uh, take this tablet three times three mm. with very water and a heavy meal mm. this person eats <laughs> once in every three days you, you you get the disconnect 
and when the patient tells daktari but sina chakula daktari hiyo ni shida yako mama mimi nimekutibu wewe ndo huu you get that you, you I, I, i'm getting that what i'm wondering is then what 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 is the solution around are we saying that we now need to introduce training courses that are more patient centric and why i say that is yeah. i saw the other day there is yeah. um a documentary yeah. around menopause yes. that has been accredited yeah. such that doctors or any healthcare practitioner who yeah. watches this documentary yeah. uh, can get their professional development points from it yeah. right yeah. but it's a documentary from a patient perspective right uh-huh. yeah. so how do we retrain practitioners because they need to understand from what i'm hearing from a patient community how how do we get them to understand that so, so for uh, i'll give my points and maybe harriet can chip mm-hmm. in because of the flow of thoughts mm-hmm. um in the us for you to do medicine mm-hmm. this what you call pre medicine mm-hmm. to test and see mm-hmm. is this the life you would want to follow yeah in our kenyan setting or in our african setting mm. it's not the same mm. so people are pushed into their career mm. actually and for, i have one friend who is a, a general surgeon in mm. busia mm. and he regrets why he went to do medicine mm. actually he says if you'd come back in another life you'd not actually follow that path so in essence it's like he was pushed mm. uh, into it so for me for career path like medicine nursing let it be from actually uh, sorry uh, i'm interjecting um there's someone who said mm. a beast student mm. who loved to be a doctor mm. who maybe went through that time the, i know there's the new university model mm. that time they would call parallel degree mm. a, a, a b student who scored a b mm. uh, went through parallel because he's passionate about this thing mm. they end up becoming better doctors mm. they are able to because it's something they were passionate about mm. and they love the people because mm. maybe they are they are more social mm. in comparison to someone who scored an a mm. they were told by their teacher mm. the only respected jobs in this country mm. is being a doctor mm. so the person scored an a went in did medicine but now he realizes he's not a people's person mm. but now because you struggled training for six to seven years to get that degree mm. you realize i cannot go back mm. i have to do it mm. so they end up being very toxic to patients so i would say before anyone ventures into these careers mm. like medicine or education that mm. deals with the nature of human being and the social being mm. i would prefer they do a pre-test mm. so that you, you and then we need to show people you don't have to be a doctor to be well off or to have a good status mm. in society no we, we have to deconstruct that you see that's what i'm saying they put a god over a lot over mm. where they say this is these are the guys you mm. see but in in our african setting the medicine one was a normal mm. villager like everyone else only that we say this is your specialization so let's do a pretest for everyone who is going to pursue that career mm. so that they would willingly love number two it will even reduce what you call mental fatigue mm. all the way most of the doctors are stressed 24 7 because mm. when you're in the wrong profession mm. it's tr- it, it, it doesn't negate because you went and did teaching or any other makes you a dunderhead not mm. really mm. so you, you, the reason why you'll be stressed 24/7 because you're in a path that was not even meant for you mm. because you are not even destined to even go to do mm. that path so let's have coaching and 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 uh, people to mentally coach these people who want to pursue it mm. actually do even if it's a pre for one or two years mm. and they're able to engage uh, with people with hospital do you like blood no 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 do, would you are you ready to bear the you know mm. medicine drains you a lot of energy because people are bringing you with their problems mm. do you have the mental capacity the emotional capacity to actually co- accommodate those stresses that people are going to bring on you so if you if you, are, if you don't have that capacity it's going to drain you mm. Number two, we need to introduce mental health mm. in our institution. I think this is something I really advocated for even for students in medical schools. Mm. Mental health should actually be included. How do you self-care mentally mm. as a as a as a healthcare provider? Mm. And then when it comes to the work formula or the work structure that is set up in our hospital. You mm. see now recently Dr. Mora killed herself. Mm-hmm. That that tells you emotionally she was drained. She's working around hospital and if you have worked around a hospital it's ever moody. Mm-hmm. it's never a happy feeling so if mm-hmm. you're a happy kind of a person it drains your emotions mm-hmm. so how do you set up systems to ensure this doctor this nurse has a place to relieve out mm-hmm. has a place to you know offload mm-hmm. <laughs> it's called offloading so if, if, yeah. if we set up those structures mm-hmm. i f- believe we'll start introducing the human uh, angle angle to it mm-hmm. that's one mm-hmm. and then number two is sh- the doctors should be told it's not just ticking the boxes mm-hmm. it's not uh, sometimes it's the workload and all that but now we move away from 
African uh, kind of medicine that it was structured it was doctor centric mm. now let's move to patient centric mm. let's let let there be what we call teamwork mm. what all where i say a patient has walked in mm. <coughs> you as a doctor you don't go and do it alone mm. You will call the nurse, you will call the pharmacist, mm. you will call the lab person, you will call the nutritionist. You'll even call a father there on the board and you'll come surround the patient and mm. say, how do we go about these things? But you see, you have put all this pressure on one person to mm. make the decision mm. for this one patient. I've seen in the in the UK, mm. they introduced that consortium. They call it a consortium. So mm. a patient comes in, there's a consortium. Mm. People discuss it. You know, it relieves you of stress. Mm. You don't have the burden to be solely the decision maker. Mm. Eventually, the doctor will have to make the decision. Mm. But they have been helped by these mm. other individuals who have come Multi and surrounded. Yeah. teams. Yes. I hear you. I mean, Harriet, as a final point, so how do we make it more human-centered? What, what do we need to do? I think there's a process of unlearning going on right now, okay. demystifying, humanizing, mm. just based on demand. Mm. I think even the conversation, we're having this conversation today mm. because people, customers, clients, patients, are asking for more mm. and when you don't give them that kind of service they're mm. avoidant yeah. so you see doctors are now saying we have so many people who don't come to us they go to mama botanicals mm. why <laughs> i was in a doctor's group. Mama botanicals. <laughs> yeah. i was in a doctor's group and someone was saying i don't understand why mm. everybody keeps going to her mm. instead of me mm. and i did one two three mm. and i said maybe it's just you're not fun mm. you know mm. may, just a simple thing maybe mm. you're not fun mm. maybe you don't give enough information maybe mm. you're using the term terminology that is so so difficult to understand maybe yeah. you're just giving bad news mm. gloom and doom mm. maybe you're not giving any hope True. Mm. so i think now mm. finally mm. doctors are beginning to ask themselves what do we need to do mm. even now mm. i have a dentist who told me that they have redesigned mm. uh -huh. the whole experience mm. even when you go in and the music they play and mm. where you sit mm. and even how the chair looks mm. and the tv yes and <laughs> the tv <laughs> so that you're not scared of going to yeah. the dentist mm. and they have this new system where they talk to you for 20 minutes mm. first to explain to you what's going on in your mouth mm. and then after that they debrief yeah. as well so uh, i've started i actively seek out my dentist mm. saying every few months i must make sure that i'm mm. not going there with a whole with a mouth full mm. of cavities mm. so i think it's the same mm. with doctors also the emphasis on prevention mm. and nutrition mm. because i i think it's it's also completely left out yeah, yeah. You know, like literally your lifestyle matters. So mm. let's let's do what they did, as you mentioned, yeah. in ancient societies. In mm. ancient Egypt, mm. you paid the doctor to keep you well, mm. as opposed to you paid the doctor to when you were you. sick. Mm. Mm. So the doctor's job mm. is to make sure nobody is sick. Mm. Yeah. And that's a very different incentive mm. model mm. compared to what we have now. Mm. Fair enough. I mean, um, Carol, last, uh, last, last statement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I get where um, practitioners mm. uh, may come from. Mm. I remember one pharmacist told me, I don't like these people doing marobaine. Mm. And I asked him why. Because how does that medicine person or herbalist mm. know the right amount or the right quantities? Mm. Then you see that was a fear because mm. they felt what if you overdose or what if, if mm. there are those herbs that are very toxic and only a small portion should be used. Mm. So how do you regulate that? Mm. Then I told him then there is nothing wrong with the moraboine. The only mm. thing is, mm. can we integrate mm. whereby mm. Let they can be guided. Mm. I like the way Amref mm. did with the midwives or the mm. traditional bath attenders. They mm. did not remove them. They mm. realized this is these are the people the community goes towards. So what mm. did they do? Why don't we teach them safe practices? So you bring those traditional bath attendants. Mm. You tell them there's HIV AIDS. Mm. Don't use uh, the same razor blade to cut the cord. Mm. Always use a new razor blade. Uh, if you find it's a big complication and a mother is bleeding, then refer. Mm. You see, you're integrating modern medicine mm. to what has been existing. Now that is now making it human. Man, mm -hmm. you, you get, but now it had reached a point. Traditional bath attenders are witches, those mm. people should be excluded according to our policies mm. and all that. So, we should now bring in our policies and bring in the pharmacist on board. Mm. So, if it's Harriet, she has come up with these uh, arrowhead kind of uh, products, mm. bringing a pharmacy, and he should not come with the mindset or indoctrination of the big pharma. No, mm. we are looking at is it working? Yes. Mm. How do you feel if it's extended on this angle, mm. it is going to be poisonous to the human race? Then you direct, so the people continue consuming the, the product, they have mm. interacted with it. It is beneficial to the community. You have also used your knowledge that you have studied in school to actually uh, and, and enable this. So mm. I believe it's, we can always find an 
any integration mm. in, in a, a mix mm. i know it's not favorable because uh i know the 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 concept of the modern medicine is human beings are the human farms and you have to make business from them mm. and yet the people who are the herbarists mm. on the other end mm. is preserving life and mm. actually the, the the fathers of medicine their aim was uh do no harm mm. but save life mm. and that is that is our role but now the the kind of way we are doing it is that uh, so long as we make our money we don't care whether that human being survived or not fair enough yeah integration harriet we are still nominating you to the committee oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean there's a lot there and i feel like we need to bring even patients to just come tell their story because at a certain point as you're saying it's i've gone i've undergone multiple surgeries right nothing seems to be working for me right and i have found something that's working it's worth listening to what's working for me as opposed to this is the standard that you've been told you need to follow right yeah. so ladies thank you so much thank you uh and welcome again and again yeah thank you and thank you for joining the one health lens podcast see you next time <laughs>